If you have a second account and you want to make a bit of money on it, or remain that you want to train during that important conference call, then these are the best AFK methods that really are AFK. With each one being rated on how easy it is to do on a new account, how AFK it is, and how much money it is per hour. But first, as always, there's a bond hidden within this video, and the first person to say where it is and timestamp it below in the comments with their RuneScape name gets it. The first one has a high requirement of 87 fishing, which is notoriously slow to level up, as well as the completion of regicide and a few pre-quests that require 56 agility, 10 crafting, and 25 range to complete. So it will take a little while if you're planning to do this on a new account. But fishing sacred eels is a pretty low effort AFK method once you have the requirements, that just requires a fishing rod and bait and can be done here in Zolandra. You don't even need to bank because you use your knife on them to get the Zulra scales once caught and those are stackable. The pools move place around every minute or so so that's the only clicking that you'll be doing and it made me around 163,000 GP at level 88 fishing and according to the wiki it's about 250,000 GP per hour at level 99. Next is a combat money maker with range being your best bet here. If you're planning to do this one for a while, I strongly recommend buying a Dragon Hunter crossbow as it will comfortably pay for itself. Brutal Black Dragons only have one requirement but it is 77 Slayer which again will take quite a while to reach on a new account. But if you do want an AFK account purely to make money then it's still definitely one to consider. As long as you don't get in melee range of the one attacking you, you won't take any damage at all with auto retaliate on and can literally AFK for as long as you like and they keep attacking you. Although after a few minutes, someone is likely to pick up your loot if you don't. I was using Rigor throughout for faster kills and banking the dragon hard and bones, although that does mean banking every 8 minutes or so. But if you just wanted to make this method extremely AFK, you could just use protection prayers and then only pick up the main drops. And evalking the armor and weapon drops would mean only banking every hour or so. The method I used got me 60 kills in an hour and the average drop is worth 25,000 GP. I'm going to use the average drop value so it's fair and I also got lucky testing one of these methods which would mess up the figures. After the cost of supplies, the average profit would be 1.4 million GP per hour doing this. This one has very low requirements to do, it just requires 35 smithing and the completion of the dwarf cannon quest to do and is extremely AFK. Making cannonballs is very slow which makes it absolutely perfect for us. Now I don't have the double cannonball mold which you can get from the Giants Foundry minigame, but it simply uses twice as many bars to give you twice as many cannonballs. So I could simply just double up the results after testing this for an hour. The profit with a single mold is 135,000 GP per hour and 270,000 GP per hour with the double. Not the best money, but very easy to create an alt account to do this method. Next is a brand new method that has come out recently with the release of the Venator Bow. It does again have a high slayer requirement of level 85 to kill Abyssal Demons, but it is incredibly AFK for combat. In the Catacombs of Koran there are 10 Abbey Demons in a multi-combat area and the Venator Bow automatically hits up to 3 targets nearby you. It constantly gets aggro from all of the demons around you and in 1 hour only twice did I lose aggro and everything I have to actually attack something again. Other than that, all you need to do is pick up the occasional rune or whip drop. Sadly, the whip price has completely died in the last year and is only worth 1.1 million GP these days, but you can get around 224 kills per hour, and I wasn't using rigor here either. You won't be picking up the abyssal ashes and the smaller drops, so the average kill is actually worth about 3,000 GP. That works out at 672,000 GP per hour and drops, but you also use Ancient Essence in the bow, arrows and prayer potions meaning the profit is 420,000 GP per hour. There are much better combat ones for purely GP, but honestly this is the most AFK money maker out of all of them. You only have to bank every 3 hours and pick up drops or top up prayer every 5 minutes or so. Next one I would consider borderline AFK, so please forgive me if you don't. If, like me, you don't have the level yet for Amethyst Mining, then this is the next best thing. To access the area, you need to complete Making Friends with My Arm Quest, which requires 66 Fire Making, 72 Mining, 35 Construction, 68 Agility, and a bunch of sub-quests, which have pretty low requirements except for Swan Song. Once the quest is completed, you will get access to a Salt Mine. Unlike most rocks, these do not automatically deplete, but instead have a random chance to every time you successfully mine some. That means the rocks can last for just a few seconds or up to a minute, but on average is around 15 to 20 seconds. 
All you need to do is mine the green, purple and red rocks until you have a stack of each type of salt and then you can mine the black rocks which give you basalt. When you fill your inventory use the basalt on any of the piles of salt to make some teleport tablets. They're stackable so you never need to bank whilst you're here. After an hour I made 379,000 GP from this so if you want a method that's easy but requires a little bit more attention then maybe this is the one for you. Firewatch Sentinels are always aggressive, are right next to an altar and drop a Blood Fury Shard which is worth 5.8 million GP once in every 1500 kills, making them an ideal way to AFK and make a bit of money. To do this you're going to need to complete the Sins of the Father quest, a master level quest with some mid level requirements and sub quests are needed for this one. As long as you aren't wearing Firewatch clothing, the Sentinels in Dartmoor will always attack you. You're going to need one of the flails from the quest to kill them which you get during the quest and you can just stand in the one place with auto retaliate on and there is enough of them that they'll just constantly keep attacking you. The only downside to this method is that it's a very popular one and your drops appear after one minute to other players. So whilst it is extremely AFK, not paying attention could mean losing a very valuable item. It took an hour to kill 111 Vars without picking up the vampire dust, the average kill is just under 7000 GP. So that means you make 750,000 GP per hour on average. 72 Slayer still takes quite a bit of time to get but is much quicker than the other Slayer creatures mentioned so far. Skeletal Wyverns also require an Elemental Shield, Mind Shield, DFS, Ward or Ancient Wyvern Shield to kill but have been a very good second account money maker for quite a long time. There are two ways to kill these, the first is to try and get as many kills as possible with your best melee setup and a Dragon Hunter Lance or a Fang. With piety and high stats, trips will last for about 20 minutes before you need to bank. The other method is to raise them and after 10 minutes or so, they'll stop being aggressive to you. This means you can safe spot them because the range they attack with you is shorter than the distance that you can range them back. Melling these got me 60 kills in one hour. Whilst the average killers were 15,000 GP, I didn't have space to pick up all of the bones, so it works out at about 750,000 GP per hour. Ranging means you don't have to bank if you don't pick up the bones and by sacrificing some of your profit you can still make around 500,000 GP per hour but with a lot less effort. What can possibly be more boring, I mean more relaxing than fishing? Karam ones need just level 65 fishing and the fishing spot never moves, plus it's right next to a fairy ring for easy banking. If you have a fish barrel from Temporos this holds an additional 28 fish and it will help with this method but it's not essential. After completing the Tidewell Wani Trio quest, you can then catch Karan Wani, which then lets you catch Karan Wans, and the only thing difficult about this method is pronouncing the things in it. After an hour or so, I caught 632, which was 196,000 GP. It didn't include catching the bait, but that takes next to no time at all, it's incredibly fast. Back to combat, and a creature that, like me, you've probably skipped more than once in a Slayer task, but drakes are a very underappreciated creature when it comes to being AFK and earning good money. They require 84 Slayer and similar to Wyverns you can melee these for far more kills or you can range for slightly less but AFK for much longer. By using super anti-fire potions the drake's special attack hits zeros on you and then all of its other attacks are range unless you stand next to it. In fact even when you do stand next to it they still range most of the time. With range you take no damage at all and with melee you take very little compared to other creatures. Drakes are considered wingless dragons, the dragon hunter weapons also work here. This is one of the most relaxed combat methods because everyone hates drakes so no one else is here. That means you only need to check your account every 3 minutes or so because there's no one around to pick up any of your drops and your guy will keep getting attacked throughout because the aggro range is quite large. And all you have to do is reset that every 10 minutes or so once they stop becoming aggressive towards you. With range I made 440,000 GP in an hour without banking and with melee it was 500,000 GP, banking just once after about 30 minutes. Cooking is one of the simplest ways to AFK and make money and there are a number of things that you can do this with, depending on your cooking level. You just want to make sure that you not only have the level to cook them but also not to burn them either. But even raw tuna at just level 55 cooking when you stop burning them will make you a reasonable profit by cooking it, with sharks being the best money out of them all if you have the level. In one hour I cooked at 1402, so from that I've worked out what the profit for all the best ones are. It isn't the best money but it's one of the lowest requirements. It's reasonably AFK and one of the few methods that can be done on free to play. Crafting is also pretty good for AFK money makers and there's three different methods that you can do. 
The first requires a fairly high crafting level. Unlike most gems, opals, red topaz and jades are actually worth even more once they're cut. This is because you crush some of them, but that amount depends on your crafting level. At high levels, you crush very few of them, meaning you can actually make money just cutting gems. I did opals because I'm 94 crafting, but at higher levels, you can make even more with red topaz. In 24 minutes, I cut 1,000 of these, which took 32 seconds per inventory. This works out a profit of around 435,000 GP per hour, but with red topaz and 99 crafting, you could actually get around 700,000 GP profit. The next one is also cutting gems, but Jagex decided this way it is now considered fletching, but you only need level 11 fletching for this. By cutting opal gems into bolt tips, you can do around 100 gems in one hour, with each inventory taking 81 seconds, and considering the low requirements and effort for this one, 260,000 GP per hour is surprisingly good. Make sure to test the prices on the G before doing this one though, as the demand for the tips is fairly low. But when I tested them, the gems bought for the current GE price and the tips instantly sold for the GE price too. Finally, in crafting, we have making drift nets, which requires 26 crafting and two jute fibers to create. It's highly recommended to also unlock Fossil Island because the loom here you create them on is the one closest to a bank. It's actually pretty good XP and a very underrated training method for crafting, considering you make almost 300,000 GP profit per hour instead of crafting costing you your entire bank and your firstborn child. At 25 seconds per inventory, it's something that you can do in the background too. Finally, in terms of GP, we have the mother of all methods, and unsurprisingly, it's combat with a lot of requirements. Rune Dragons require you to complete Dragon Slayer 2 first, and you need all of this to be able to do that, but it's well worth it. If doing this method AFK, you're probably better to bring the best defensive melee gear that you have, as well as insulated boots, which means the special attack only hits you for around 6 damage each time. You're also going to need full anti-fire protection, and again, the Dragon Hunter Lance is highly recommended. The Dig Side Pendant takes you right to the Ruined Dragons, and the Ring of Dueling can take you straight to Castle Wars, or if you prefer, Ferox Enclave to reset your stats. These attack you from a long distance away, meaning even you aren't paying attention, you will always be constantly attacking them. The downside to Rune Dragons is that although with insulated boots for attack from magic and anti-fire protection on they don't hit you very often, they do have a max hit of 31, and on the odd occasion they can do 2-3 big hits in a short space of time. Whilst it's fairly AFK here most of the time, where you only need to eat and pick up your loot every minute or so, you always have to be paying attention for those occasional big hits in a row. If that doesn't put you off though, it's well worth it as Rune Dragons can get you a very tidy 1.7 million GP profit per hour after supplies. Thanks for watching, if you have any video that you would like me to do, please let me know down below in the comments.